Welcome to hunting episode number 11. If that's not one way to get your blood pumping, I don't know what else is. I'm pretty sure they ran right across my second trail cam. I don't know. But my dad and I, we were working up here just to check the trail cams this evening. And so we checked our first one, got a few nice white tail bucks on there. We came up to this ridge to, uh, to check on my second one. We took a break, you guys can see. Here's all our stuff just laying down. Just heard two twigs crack right behind over there. I just saw the rack coming through. I was like, oh dude, that's a nice buck. This is why I love hunting in the rain. Animals are just moving. You don't know what you're gonna see. That was a beautiful whitetail buck. He came right there, 10 yards. I guess that's one way to welcome you guys to the video. My dad and I, we have officially made it to the spot that we normally hit up first. And so we're gonna sit here, we're just gonna wait for daylight to break. And then once we get enough daylight, we're just gonna glass those same hillsides. And uh, we're just gonna see if we can spot a bear. Last time we came in a little late. And so when I, first, when I spotted that bear last time, he was already working his way into the timber. So this time we're a little bit earlier, so. Hopefully when we spot them, they're still just feeding right in the wide open and hopefully that gives us enough time to just stalk in on them. So right now the sun is slowly coming alive and daylight is slowly breaking. So we're just going to be patient and hopefully we can glass something up pretty soon here. Alright guys, first light, bear spotted, way at the very, very, very top. I have him on the spotting scope right now. Just uh, looks like a pretty nice black bear. My dad's actually working his way up there, so I'm going to let my dad know. Pretty much my daddy and I, we're going to work our way up to that bear here pretty shortly, but basically what I'm doing right now is I'm just glassing these smaller, these closer hillsides first. And uh, I'm just keeping my spotting scope on the bear because I want to make sure that it's not a sow with cubs first. I mean, the bear, it looks like a tank of a bear. He's clearly just feeding on huckleberries right now. So right now it's first light. So the video is all pixelated just because it's, you know, it doesn't have enough light. But it's enough to see the bear, so. Maybe not as big as I thought I originally thought, but it's definitely a nice bear. So right now, the only thing I'm doing right now is I'm just trying to confirm that this bear does have cubs. That's the only reason why I haven't left yet. I'm just gonna wait a little bit more. I'm just gonna wait a little bit more. I saw the bear 
So far, no signs of that bear. It is 8.18 in the morning right now. I first spotted that bear right around six o'clock. And so, spent like 20, 25 minutes looking at that bear. Uh, it was a pretty good sized bear, but the more important thing was I was just making sure that it was in a cell with cubs. And just by the looks of it, it just looked like it was a lone bear. Uh, so I sprinted up that mountain, which was a pretty, pretty hefty sprint. Not really sprint, but I climbed up that mountain as, as fast as I could. So basically we were trying to beat the bear before the bear headed off to the timber. But unfortunately we were a little too slow. So by the time we got up here, by the time we got up here, that bear was nowhere to be found. Back to square one and just back to glass. And Just bumped two beautiful blue grouse. But unfortunately, grouse season opens in September, so all we can do is just watch them for now. There's one in the tree, the other one landed down here. We might bump it again, but two beautiful blue grouse would make a perfect catch, clean, and cook, but it's not quite season yet, so we're gonna go find a bear. That's what we're going to do. Alright, so ever since early morning, uh, hunting has been pretty slow for us. And so I think my dad is actually planning to leave early because um, the biggest thing about hunting during this time of the year is the day is super long so a lot of times your best chances at a bear are early morning and right at last light early morning is good but the the wait to get back to basically the last hours of shooting light is a little too long so I think my dad just says you know we're just gonna pretty much start hiking our way down but before we close this video and we close this hunt out I want to answer probably the number one question I've been asked ever since I uploaded my last two videos and that is how do you carry your rifle so what I'm using is called the Kafaro universal gun bearer this universal gun bearer is basically a two-piece system so you have the bottom piece I call it which is the one that you put down here this holds the butt of your rifle and then you have this part up here kind of towards your chest where it straps around uh, the front part of your rifle and so quickly here I'll show you guys to do it ever since I bought this setup right here you guys will see I I don't even carry a sling on my rifle anymore because this is a game changer for me and so to me I just like completely ditched the traditional sling and I just completely went with this so so I will address that if you do plan to get the universal gun bearer uh, there's two important things that you need on your backpack so the first one is you need a sturdy hip belt the second one is you need a sturdy uh, shoulder strap because if, if your waist belt and your shoulder straps are flimsy, what I've noticed is that your gun will like, it'll flop around. I run the XO Mountain Gear 3500, the K2 3500, and it works perfect for me. I think if you have any backpack that has a good hip belt and a good shoulder strap, you should be fine. So I think if you're running Kuyu packs, Mystery Ranch, Stone Glacier, Kafaro packs, uh, XO Mountain Gear, um, uh, any other like higher end backpack i think you should be fine for the most part i tried this with my badlands backpack and it just was not the thing so so you take the butt of your rifle right here and you just slip it in and after that you take this part up here which is a just a strap you're gonna strap around your rifle and then there's a little clip up here where you just strap it in and then you're just gonna cinch it and then you're just gonna tap it shut and then boom your rifle is ready to go and you can start moving again so hopefully for those of you who are wondering 
Hopefully that answers the question. I'm not endorsed by Kafaro or anything like that. I just, I'm just gonna tell you guys what I use and what I believe in and what I think works. So the Kafaro Universal Gun Barrier is definitely one of those things where I highly recommend if you don't like the traditional sling. So I'm gonna hike down this mountain, go meet up with my dad, and then we're probably gonna slowly work our way back to the car. All right, just made it back to the car. It is steaming hot, so I think it's a good decision to go home. So I think that's gonna wrap it up for this one, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you.